Buenos días, bienvenidos al curso módulo de competitividad 10, código FG708, semana número 2. Como ya sabemos, este curso se está impartiendo en idioma inglés, así es de que vamos a continuar. Topic number one, propagation of plants. Number two, sexual propagation. Number three, sexual propagation. This is Elio Ochoa. I'm an environmental engineer, and I'm glad to stay here with you to continue with our course. Here we have our last objectives, and the number one is describe the concept of propagation of plants. Next, we have the study of sexual plants propagation. And the last one is explain some types of asexual plants propagation. We will be sharing all of these items. So let's continue. Propagation of plants. Let me check here if I can have the pen. Plant propagation is the process of obtaining new plants from existing sources, uh, whether mm, seeds or cuttings, bulbs, or tubers, or rhizomes, or plant tissues. Always that we have some of these processes, we can obtain new plants. Plant preparation has several objectives, such as increasing, increasing the number of plants, preserving genetic diversity, preserving genetic diversity, improving plant characteristics, or creating new varieties. Plant propagation can be done either sexually or sexually, depending on the type of plant and the method used. Just a minute, please. I think we're not sharing the screen here. Let me check. Just a moment. I am checking why the slides are not running here.
Let's continue with the course. We were talking about creating of plants, and we were saying that there are two main processes by plants to in order to reproduce, and these uh, main processes are sexually. Sexually or asexual, depending on the type of plant and the methods used. Let's talk uh, a little bit about this uh, this process. Here we have two main processes. Two main processes. Okay. Or modes of reproduction. Sexually. That this process involves the fusion, the fusion of two gametes, fusion of two gametes. And these gametes are. For example, for example, a pollen, pollen, and ovule, ovule. If you remember your botanic. Your botany course, you know what I'm talking about here. And the sexual, the sexual this is a process where we use stems, use stems. Roots or leaves to obtain a new plant. To obtain a new plant. New plant. So this is the concept that we can use to understand what propagation of plants are. Let's continue with our presentation here. So here we can see an example of propagation of plants. This is an artificial process to obtain uh, a bunch or or a weight quantity of trees. In this case, we can see here in a lettuce, say here in Guatemala. So this is uh, an example of artificial propagation of plants. Um, in this case, we can see that these uh, trees are harvested to, to use them uh, on Christmas 
Christmas. You know, the the pairing of the end of each year. Let's continue. Okay. 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 Okay.
that helps plants to transfer pollination within the same plant or with two different flowers or plants. And here we can see an example on how we a wind a wind is able to help this pine to transfer pollen between two trees. So we can hear hear a cloud cloud of pollen that is um, flying through the air between different trees. Okay, let's continue. Pollination is uh, of great importance for agriculture as many crops depend on pollination services to increase their yield and quality. Pollinators such as uh, bee, such as bees, bees, we saw an example before. We saw an example of bees and bumblebees, butterflies, hummingbirds, and other animals contribute to food security and rural development by pollinating more than 75% of the world's food crops. So this is the reason why pollination is so important to reproduce new plants because we depend on 75% of this process to obtain food uh, resources and other materials or plants. Pollination also supports biodiversity, conservation, and adaptation to climate change. Climate change is a famous concept today because no, there are many countries and scientists working on this concept and climate change and also by maintaining the genetic diversity of plants and their ability to adapt to environmental conditions. Let's continue. Characteristics of sexual hybrid reproduction. Currently, around the world, there are this process to obtain a new plant. And this is a, a type of a hybrid plants that are those that result from crossing to different species, either naturally or artificially. In our last class, we saw the taxonomy classification from top to bottom. We had seven levels. Four levels taxonomy. And if you remember, the at the bottom of this classification, we have species. 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 And the next level was um, family. 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 <laughs> For hybrid plants, 
we need to combine two different species. Let's say species one and species two. If we cross these two species, we will obtain the hybrid plant. In the next paragraphs, we're going to check some of these examples of hybrid plants. They usually they usually have combined characteristics of the their parents. Combined characteristics of the parents, which can give them adaptive or aesthetic advantages. Some examples of hybrid plants are yield. Hybrid plants usually have a higher yield than no hybrid plants due to the phenomenon of heterosis or hybrid vigor, which implies an increase in productivity, resistance, and adaptability of hybrid plants. Another characteristic is uniformity. Hybrid plants are usually more uniform more uniform than non hybrids since they have a practically unique genotype while non hybrid can be can have several genotypes within the same variety hybrid plants also have Differences in quality, cost, and also specialization. But we don't need to study these concepts in deep, in deep uh, form because only a general knowledge of these characteristics are good for you. It's more important to know about some examples of hybrid plants. Here we have two examples. The first one is the stargazer lily and the lemon boy. These are two hybrid plants obtained using the crossing of two species. And we will check the next slide with this type of plants. The first one was created by California Lily Breeder in 1974. It has large fragrant pink flowers with white and black spots. It is a fast growing plant that blooms in summer. The second one is a popular hybrid tomato. Tomato variety that is relatively new is a it is a big hit among both home and commercial crops. The medium size grow to seven or eight ounces and have a distinct beautiful bright yellow color. The lemon oil hybrid is very cyst resistant. This is an important new characteristic, the blood. Because this way, we will be able to keep these plants healthy for more time. Thanks to this new characteristic, this is resistant. And grows at an average speed, producing fruit in about 22 days. 
They price lemon poisa sugary sweets. Sugary sweets. So, mm, much people like to eat this this tomato because it's sweet. High yielding and can be harvested throughout the growing season. In yeah, well, let's continue. Here we have an examples, some examples of hybrid plants. This is uh, the first first one that we were talking about in the previous slide. The stargaze, stargaze, stargaze lady, stargaze lady. Mm -hmm. And this is a mixture of uh, two different flowers. And over there, we have the lemon boy. The lemon boy is also a mixture of two varieties to obtain this one. And let's continue. Here we have another two examples of hybrid plants. The tomato. The tomato and the brimato. The tomato, the Scientific name is Lan Barbanki. It's a hybrid plant made by grafting a tomato and potato plants. That's, this is an interesting fusion between a tomato and a potato plant. In the next slide, we're going to see an example, an example of this new plant and this is possible because both species belong to the same genus genus called solando so this way they are compatible with each other they are able to cross themselves and produce a new a new hybrid plant. A single tomato plant produces tomatoes and the branches and tails on the roots. We can see it in the next slide. Here, the roots of this new hybrid plant uses potatoes here and tomatoes here. Okay, this is a, an example of the, this tomato. <clears throat> and let's go back. The marimato is another hybrid plant, a tea by grafting an eggplant and tomato plant. It was first introduced by Indian scientists in Varanasi. It has purple and brown fruits, similar to eggplants, but with a sweeter and less bitter taste. Unfortunately, I, I didn't. I was I wasn't able to get an image for example because uh, you know uh, due to. To outdoor rights on the internet. So, <laughs> but let's continue. This is the last example of hybrid plant, the shade tree. That is a hybrid tree 
that arises from the cross between the oriental plane, three, platanus, platanus is the scientific name, is platanus, uh, check here, platanus orientalis, and the western plane, three, platanus occidentalis. It is a very resistant and adaptable tree which can reach up to 40 meters height. It's a big, it's a big tree. On top to bottom, it measures 40, 40 meters, 40 meters height. It's a big tree. It has large locked leaves and spherical fruits that hang in posters. We can see an example of this on the next slide. Here is the platanus, platanus uh, orientalis, platanus orientalis. This is a uh, 40 meters height, and here we can see the type of fruits that this tree produces. Platanus orientalis. Now we will check this topic of asexual propagation plants. Asexual propagation involves reproduction by vegetative parts, which are those not involved in sexual reproduction, such as, I mentioned it before, stems, leaves, stems, leaves, roots, and buds. Asexual propagation has the advantage of obtaining plants that are identical to the Parent plants. It means that they are identical, they are clones, clones of the parent plant, which allows the preservation of desirable characteristics or uniformity of crops. In addition, asexual propagation is usually faster and more efficient than sexual propagation. These are the difference between sexual propagation and the asexual one. Asexual propagation is faster and more efficient. This is an important characteristic of asexual propagation. And they and this process doesn't depend on pollination or seeds or seeds dis dispersion. However, asexual variability, variability between plants, which can increase the risk of infections or harmful mutations. These are two examples of disadvantages of asexual reproduction. And let's continue with the next slide. Okay, here we can see different processes of asexual propagation of plants. The first one is cutting. Cutting. This consists of cutting a part of the stem or leaf of a plant and placing it in a suitable substrate so that it can emit fruits and form any plants. It is a simple and economical method used for many ornamental or fruit species. You can see here this little branch. This is a little branch 
of the tree. Branch of the tree. With the, some cares or some treatments, we are able to produce these roots here for the branch of the tree. And then after we can obtain these roots here, we can we can bring this branch to the soil and this branch will be able to produce the new plant. This is cutting. And the next process is or method to sexual propagation is grafting. Grafting. Grafting consists of uniting a part of the stem. Remember that the stem is the hard part of a tree. This is the step. Step. And with this procedure, we are able to fusion two different steps. As you can see here, we have one step, and here we have another step, but they are merged. They are made merged together to work in a new plant. And here we can see many branches, many branches of the tree that are combined or are merged into one step. In this case, these are little stems, and this is the big one. So we can fusion or combine both stems to obtain new plants. We're talking here about sexual population. The method is called gravity. Let's continue. Another method to obtain a new plant by asexual reproduction is diarrhea. Diarrhea consists of passing the rooting of part of the stem of a plant without separating it from the mother plant. You can see here. The branch, the branch that was placed into the soil here to obtain a new one. Okay. The name of this method is layering, or in Spanish we say codo. If you remember your previous courses. <laughs> Okay, let's continue. And the other method to obtain a new plant using asexual reproduction is division. And it consists of separating the parts that form a plant with several individuals united by the same system. You can check here that here we have here we have two two plants or two branches united in one root. If we if we separate here, we will obtain a new plant like the one like the one that we see aside the previous one. This is another 
essential method to obtain new plants. We also have another essential method that is called micropropagation. And it consists of growing small pieces, small pieces of the plant. Small pieces of plant tissue between cells, cells, vegetative cells. And you can see here these cells. But in this case, we have a leaf cell, a leaf cell here, leaf, leaf cell, leaf cell, leaf cell, that is going to be fusion with a with a petal, petal cell. Here. This is another way to obtain a new plant. Nitrogen, the green, green cells, the leaf with pinky. In the cells of the petal. Okay. If they push on themselves, we will get a new hybrid plant with new characteristics. Let's continue. Cloning. Cloning consists of obtaining genetically identical plants from somatic non reproductive reproductive cells by means of biotechnological techniques such as cell fusion, nuclear transfer, or genetic transformation. It is a method that makes it possible to introduce new or improved characteristics in plants through genetic manipulation. And it is used for some agricultural or forestry species. So we'll get we'll get into the end of this course. And thank you for listening and coming here to learn this uh, course. If you have some questions, you can. As they, then I'll be able to answer your questions. You want to? <laughs> Thanks for your attention. And we have some quiz for week two. You will be able to see this uh, piece online and on the video of a college, this college. And thank you for your attention.